Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to cover a few topics from 4.1 and 4.2 that I didn't get to in class. Um, so first of all, and someone actually asked me um, why I didn't go over this theorem, um, and the answer is uh, I'm going to go over it now. So we had this theorem that tells us how we can add um, when we have congruence mod m. So the theorem basically says um, addition works very, very nicely. So we start out with um, a is congruent to b mod m, and c is congruent to d mod m, then that means um, a plus c is congruent to d, b plus d mod m. So basically you add the, lefts, the, the integers on the left sides are going to be equal to adding on the right side, or they're congruent to adding on the right side mod m. Uh, same thing with multiplication. Um, a is congruent to b mod m, c is congruent to d mod m, that means a times c is going to be congruent to b times d mod m. So let's see how that works. Um, so in this example, we're going to take um, these two congruences that I have. So the first one, 7, is congruent to 2 mod m. So uh, just kind of almost parenthetically, let's see why that's true. Um, you know, 5 divides... 7 minus 2, because 7 minus 2 is just 5, and so 5 divides itself. So, yeah, we've confirmed that, that first um, congruence. And then um, the second one says 11 is congruent to 1 mod 5. Well, that's just going to say that 5 divides 11 minus 1. And 11 minus 1 is 10, and yeah, 5 does divide 10, so that one is also true. So let's see what we get if we do these additions. Um, so just... Looking on the left-hand sides, 7 plus 11 should be congruent to 2 plus 1 mod 5. That is, um, 18 should be congruent to 3 mod 5. Um, and it is, because 5 does indeed divide um, 18 minus 3. That is... 5, oops, that won't go that far down, will it? Um, 5 does divide um, 18 minus 3, which is 15. And yeah, 5 does divide 15. So we've, uh, we've done an example of this part of the theorem. So now let's see how the multiplication one works. So let's move this right up here. And... So we have uh, these two congruents again. 7 is congruent to 2 mod 5, and 11 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So if the theorem is true, we should get that 7 times 11 is congruent to 2 times 1 mod 5. So 77 should be congruent to 2 mod 5. And yeah, that's certainly true because 5 will divide 77 minus 2. That is, 5 will divide 75. So yeah, we've, we've confirmed that one and we've confirmed that one. Uh, or actually, we've shown examples um, of, of applying those two um, parts of the theorem. Okay, the last thing I wanted to cover um, from 4.1 is this idea of something called modular arithmetic. Um, so what I want to do first is I want to define um, some new sets for you. Um, so let's let Z, M be equal to the set that consists of 0, 1, 2, 3, all the integers up to m minus 1, okay? But notice um, there are m of them. These are m is how many integers we have. So here we have um, 1 through m minus 1. That gives us m minus 1 integers. Um, and then that 0 right there will give us m. So for example, uh, for example, Z mod, sometimes this is called Z mod 2, the integer is mod 2. 
or just Z2. Um, this is going to be equal to the set 0 and 1. Uh, another example, Z, um, you know, 10, Z10 would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up through 9. And what I want to do is I want to define something called uh, modular addition. on this set Zm, or sometimes called Z mod M. And I'm going to define it by, so I'm going to take A plus mod M B. This is going to be equal to A plus B mod M. Oops, mod M. Now, here's what you need to notice. Um, this A right here is an element of ZM, and B over here is an element of ZM. And this addition is thought of as happening inside this set of ZM. And it's the, the way that we define it is we, we regard these things as just regular old integers, and we add them as integers. And whatever this addition is, we just take that mod m. We're going to define um, multiplication in a similar way, uh, where a times mod m b is going to be equal to a times b mod m, where again we have a and b thought of as elements of zm, and this multiplication is happening in zm, and the way that we, we do it is we, now we regard these as just plain old integers and multiply them and then do mod m, okay, we, we divide m into them and find, find out what the remainder is. So let's see a couple examples of this. So here I've written out um, all of the elements in Z11. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I want to add 7 as an element of Z11 plus 9 as an element of Z11. Well, by definition, this is just going to be equal to 7 plus 9 mod 11. That's equal to 16 mod 11. And so let's see what 16 mod 11 is. Um, if I divide 11 into 16, it goes one time with a remainder of 5. And so that remainder is the answer. So this is going to be equal to 5 mod 11. 11. So let's think about what we're doing here. Remember when you first learned how to add, you can on your fingers? Let's do something kind of like counting on our fingers. Um, we're going to start at 7, because we're doing 7 plus 9 um, in, in this element, or in this set Z11. So if I start at 7, I'm going to count up 9 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. See what happened right there? When I got to the end of the set, it just circles back to the start because this set only goes up to 11. Um, but that's the same thing as just calculating this remainder. 7, so I'm going to add 9 to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's all you're doing when you're adding in, in these special sets, these special Z11 or Z mod 11. You're just starting at 1, and you're going to the end, circling back, and you're just continuing to count. So that, that's all that you're doing when you're doing this. It's really, really easy. Um, and you have really big numbers, and you don't want to sit and count them one by one. Well, you add the numbers as integers, and then just find out what you get. Divide your, um, your modulus 11 into this number, and then find out what your remainder is. Uh, and then multiplication works the same way. Let's, let's do one quick example like that. 
so here that we, here we have that same set z11, um, and we want to multiply um, seven times nine inside z11. Well, by definition, this is just equal to seven times nine as integers, and then we just take that mod mod eleven. So that's equal to seven times nine is um, sixty three mod 11, we're going to get 11 goes into 63 five times with eight left over. So there's the remainder, and the remainder is our answer. So this is equal to 8 mod 11. So 7 times 9 in Z11 is equal to 8. So 7 times 7 mod 11 plus times 9 mod 11 is 8 mod 11. Now, you can get the same answer by, you know, starting at 7 and counting up, um, you know, to 7. It's counting 7 nine times, but that would take a while. Um, it's quicker just to multiply as integers and then do the division and, and see what your remainder is. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now I want to cover a couple topics from 4.2 that I didn't get to in class. Um, the first one is adding numbers base 2. This is actually pretty um, pretty neat. Um, it's like adding decimal numbers, except when you carry, you have to remember that you're carrying base 2. So let's see how that would work. I want to add 1110 plus 1011. And I'm adding base 2. So 0 plus 1 is a 1. Now, in this place value, I have 1 plus 1, which would be a 2, but remember, since we're in base 2, um, that's going to give us a 0 and carry a 1. 1 plus 1 would be 2, but we're base 2, so that's 0, and we carry a 1. So now we have this 1, whoops, sorry, this 1 and this 1 are going to add up to give a 0. Um, and it would carry over to the next place. So we have one carrying over. Um, and then we have this one left. So we've used this one and this one to carry over to get this one in the new place value. But we still have this one over here. So when we carry it down, we're going to have a one and a one. So we get that one, 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 zero base two plus 1011 base 2 is going to be equal to 11001 base 2. In class, I talked about converting from um, decimal into um, base 2, binary, base 8, octal, and base 16 hexadecimal, and, and vice versa, converting from binary to decimal, base 8 to decimal, or base 16 to decimal. So now I want to show you um, a really easy way to go from um, either base 2 to base 8 or base 2 to base 16 and then vice versa going from base 8 to base 2 or base 16 to base 2. And it all uses this table right here. So this nifty little table lists um, really all the digits you'll use um, for binary, octal, and hexadecimal, and it also lists um, decimal numbers. So we have the nine decimal digits, and it also has um, 10 through 15, because you know that's what hexadecimal goes up to. But notice what we have here. Um, at zero, the decimal, hexadecimal, binary, octal, and binary are all the same. Um, in this column, it's the same for the ones. And in this column, decimal hexadecimal and octal are the same, but now we have the binary representation of 2. Um, here we have 3, 3, 3, and the binary representation of 3. And so it goes like that up to 8, and then at 8 we have the decimal 8, the hexadecimal 8, and here is the octal 8 and the binary 8. So this lets us very quickly see, well, okay, what if I have um, 1, 2 in octal? Well, that's going to correspond to a 10 in, de in decimal or an A in hexadecimal or a 1010 in, in binary. So 
what's really useful is to just um, notice that, uh, you know, uh, if you're in octal, you're in base 8, but that's the same thing as saying base 2 cubed. So that, that cubed is going to be really important because it just tells us how to group together numbers when we're going from binary to octal. You'll see what I mean on the next, uh, the next slide when we do an example. And similarly, uh, base 16, that's really the same thing as saying base 2 to the 4th. So that 4 is going to be important because it's going to tell us how to group, to, to group together uh, binary numbers when we convert to base 16. So let's, let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's, let's um, do this one first, and then we'll do this one. All right, I want an octal representation of this binary number. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, base 2. So first thing you want to do is you want to write this, um, but group together your numbers in groups of three, starting from um, starting from the the rightmost side, because remember this is your lowest place value. So what would that look like? So let me uh, shrink this up a bit so I have some more room and put it up here. So I'm going to rewrite this number as zero zero. Just realized I'm not going to have enough room if I do that. So let's say it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then at the end, I'll have 1, 1, and I'll throw a 0 on there uh, just to make it all in groups of 3. So base 2. So this is going to be equal to what well, you just find those numbers in your table. Um, so let's look at um, 0, 1, 1. Well, here is 0, 0 in binary. That corresponds to 3 in octal. So I have a 3. And then this group of 1, 1, 1, here it is in binary. That is a 7 in octal. 0, 1, 0. Well, here's 1, 0 in binary. That's a 2 in octal. Uh, then I have 1, 1, 1 right here. 7 in octal again. And then I have a 1, 0, 0. That is right here, which is a 4 in octal. And there we go. That's our octal representation of that binary number. And to uh, go from um, binary to hexadecimal, so in hexadecimal representation of this number, um, well, I've, I've already written this in, in, in groups of four, um, so let's just let's just do it. Uh, this is going to be equal to. So this is a one one in binary, that is right here. In hexadecimal, that's a 3. Then I have 1110. Right here, 1110 is an E in hexadecimal. One zero one one is right... Where is it? Oh, here. 1011 is a B. And finally, 1100 is right here. That's a C. And so there is our hexadecimal representation of that binary number we started with. All right, so to go from this octal representation to binary, and we have a 7, a 6, and a 5. So you just go, um, just like the going the other way. You just find the 7 in the octal and see what the binary is. The 6 and the 5. 
so 7, 6, 5. So we're going to get that 7, 6, 5 in octal is equal to 7 is 1, 1, 1. 6 is 1, 1, 0. And finally, 5 is 1, 0, 1. Base 2. All right, and this last example um, is done just like the other one. So we just look at, what do we have? We have an A, an 8, and a D. So we're going from hexadecimal. So find the A, the 8, and the E, and then just copy down the corresponding binary numbers. So A, 8, D. And hexadecimal is going to be equal to, well, the A is 1010. Zero, one, the 8 is 1000. Zero, 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 and the D is 1101. One, zero, one. And it's as easy as that.